This is a Focusrite Scarlett 4i4 USB audio interface and I've repaired a few of these and the footage was just very boring so instead I'm going to just give a few notes and things that I've noticed about these. Uh, this is the third generation, it says so on the back. It has a USB-C connector but it's still USB 2 and it's just standard USB uh, device. Uh, the 4i4 does draw a lot of current, and that's why even on the manufacturer's website, they say, well, if it doesn't work, if it acts up when you plug it in, try a different cable, a different plug, a different USB hub. And I've measured it, and indeed, on power on, it draws a, a lot of current. Uh, the few that I've repaired, most of them had a dead CPU in them. The main symptom is usually, well it varies, sometimes you'll plug it into the computer and uh, the 48 volt button will work, uh, like the it'll turn on and off. Uh, some of these indicators may turn on or not. Sometimes all the all the LEDs turn on and nothing happens. Uh, what is constant is that the computer won't recognize it and sometimes the OS, if you're on Linux, it'll report an, it could report an overcurrent fault. In one case, the, the USB connector, the pins were all mangled inside, inside. You could, it's hard to see on the camera, but with a magnifying glass or a microscope, it was pretty obvious. To take these apart, there's two screws, so you don't need to take off these rubber bumpers, only the, the two in the back. What I suggest is that you just peel them off, but don't rip them off completely because it's hard to get that adhesive to, to work again. So peel them off just so you can get to the, the screw head, take the screw off, and then the pad can stay there. So two screws in the back, then the whole tray comes out like this. And just as a quick overview, a USB connector here, uh, main processor, it has a one volt regulator right here. That one usually is not a problem. It only powers the processor. Uh, this here is the EEPROM. It's fed from the three volt rail. Three, three volt regulator is right here. And this one almost always dies. And when it dies, it short circuits the five volt from the USB to the three volt rail. That three volt rail powers part of the CPU. Uh, in particular, the USB peripheral, maybe some other things, uh, some I.O. perhaps, I'm, I'm not sure. So the USB is usually uh, is the first thing to stop working. The clock generator, I think, is also fed from 3 volts, but uh, it survives, or it's rated to up to 5 volts, I forget. Uh, the EEPROM doesn't suffer too much from that. There's, I think there's one or two other things on the 3-volt rail, but that's, that's the main thing that goes. And... Of course, it's for copy protection. They have a bootloader in there with decryption keys. So you could copy the EEPROM here. There's no problem there, but if you don't get the proper bootloader in there, well, it's not going to boot. Luckily, Focusrite are absolutely great with replacement parts. You can actually buy the, the CPU, and it's about the same price as you'd pay at any regular distributor, so there's just no point in trying to get the firmware out of there. You can just order a new one. Or if your thing is still under warranty, just uh, get in touch with them. They're, they're pretty good. And this regulator is just an off-the-shelf part. I'm not sure why it keeps dying. It's It appears to be operating within specs. The uh, It has a soft start, so I don't think it's, it's the inrush killing it. Uh, it's very hard to measure temperatures here. This is a tiny, tiny package. So I'm really not sure. <laughs> I've, I've been tempted to add... Uh, a uh, high voltage crowbar to avoid further problems, but it was uh, kind of tricky to fit that in here and I just never got around to do it. When you're probing around, you might be tempted to clip a ground, a ground probe on this screw here or somewhere obvious. Uh, this one isn't directly connected to the, the digital ground, so you can't just clip there. And especially if that if you if, if it's turned off, it's I think it's about three ohms between the two grounds, but when it's on, like the voltages are all wrong. So you can use either some of these 
um, some of this ground area here and uh, to be honest I don't remember exactly which ones you can use I, I'm tempted to say the the shield connection here but it just just make sure it is the, the actual power ground when you're measuring the replacing this is kind of tricky because there's a bunch of comp components on the back side so it's not easy to to preheat the board or preheat it, preheat it from both sides and it's pretty large and it has a thermal pad so it's really kind of tricky and you got plastic and all kinds of components all over the place so not not an easy fix for sure uh, if you do need to get the the rear panel off that's kind of a pain because there's a whole piece that's glued on the full on its full surface so what I've I've done it once only I didn't need to do it really but I did anyway on on one of the units I fixed so you have to peel it off hot air kind of helps and uh, you got to be careful not to break it once you peel it off then there's a, a few hex nuts around these six connectors and then take those off take uh, these these two screws off and then you can take the whole panel off I think I did that to get to the USB connector but on closer inspection I didn't really even need to do that uh, well it helped because you're really really close to the plastic there but so yeah that's been my experience hope this helps uh, good luck fixing these. It's possible that the 2i2 and maybe the Solo might have some parts in common, but I don't think they've been nearly as much trouble as the 4i4, simply because it, it draws so much current. And I expect the, the, other, the other ones will probably use uh, the same family CPU, same architecture, all the analog sections going to be different, obviously, but it's probably going to be very similar. Alright, thanks for watching.